Welcome back, folks. I've got the fuel tank for the Yamaha YL1 prepared for using my stud puller. I've ground this back a little bit further to get the copper off so I can get down to bare steel. Upon closer examination, I've decided that this larger dent here right on the top is one I'm going to attempt to pull out with the stud puller. This is the deepest of the dents. And right about here where my finger is, the dent is pretty significant, as well as right here. There's a little bit of a bridge right here that goes between them. So right here and right here. Moving a little further back, again, upon review, this, this uh, small series of dents is pretty shallow. In fact, they're very shallow. So I'm not going to use the dent puller on this particular dent, I think I'll just use body filler as well as this one. However, this dent right here and this one are fairly significant. So again, I'll use the stud puller here and here. And you can see again, I've got the copper ground down to, or away. So I'm down to bare steel. So here, here, and here is where I'm going to attempt to use the stud puller. I went online and looked up the studs that are typically available for this kind of work, and you can buy them. Harbor Freight sells them as, as well as other places. And everything I can determine, those are about a three millimeter diameter stud. So what I did is I went through my uh, nail stash. I got a lot of fasteners and nails I've accumulated over the years, and I found these nails. This is just a common, everyday household nail. This measures about three and a half millimeters in diameter. So these are real close in size to the uh, commercially available studs. My thinking is that I will weld these studs as necessary around the dent to allow me to get a purchase with the uh, puller. Towards that end, I took the these nails and I just flattened the bottom of them, or the head of them a little bit, because some of them had a little crown or a little burr from the manufacturing process. So I just flattened it off as well as touched up the rim to get off any coatings to make it easier to weld them in place. So I prepared 10 of them. I'm probably going to need more than that. I've got plenty of them. But I thought I would start with 10, and we'll see if I need more. I'll use more. Now the idea is to weld these in place, to be a little redundant about the conversation, weld these in place, just tack them in place, put the stud puller, pull up, thereby relieving the dent and pulling it out. Then you come back with a cutoff wheel and you cut off the stud and then you grind it back to probably just the slightly uh, concave, just a little bit so you can use body filler to smooth it out. That's the general process. I have never done this before, so this will be the first time I have ever attempted this myself, though I know it's done commonly all the time in automotive repair. As far as I can tell, one of the keys to uh, being successful on, a, on an old tank like this is getting the heat right so that I don't blow through this, uh, this metal when I do the tack welding. You want to avoid that because otherwise now uh, you've got a, re a dent or a hole rather I'm going to have to repair. So I'm going to have to try to do some test tacks to see if I can get the heat in just the right sweet spot uh, that you adequately attach the stud but at the same time you're not blowing through the metal. So that'll be one of the uh, next things I'm going to have to think through a little bit. Before we get to welding, let's talk about fuel tanks a little bit, though. I thought I'd take the opportunity here to share with you my perspective on fuel tanks. Uh, the first thing I do with a fuel tank uh, when I'm anticipating putting it back in the service and repairing it, repainting it, or whatever, is I test it for leaks. There's no sense putting a lot of effort into uh, repainting a tank or... Uh, significantly putting effort into restoring a tank and find out it leaks. And usually if they leak, it'll be down along here along the seam on the bottom. You get pinholes, that kind of thing. So the first thing I do is leak test them. So this tank, I filled it with water 
right up to the right up to the rim here, capped it. Obviously, you have to plug any openings you might have to do that. I fill up with water and just let it set for a day or two. And I usually will elevate it off some 2x4 or something like that. And I'll try to get it nice and level, top off the water, and just let it set. And uh, if it holds water after two, one to two days, and I'm satisfied it uh, doesn't have any leaks, and then I can continue on with the work. And that's already been done on this tank. The other thing I like to talk about a bit is liners or sealing of tanks. And I will be honest with you, I am not a huge proponent of sealing tanks. Now, I do know a few people that putter around in motorcycles, and one of the very first things they'll do is, is either they themselves will seal the tank with one of the commercially available tank sealers, or they'll send it out and have somebody do it for them. I'm not quick on the draw with that. In fact, I prefer not to line a tank if I can avoid it. And in fact, this tank, I don't know how well you can see in there, it has been cleaned. It's in very good shape. It's been cleaned and flushed a number of times now. I have no intentions of lining this tank. It doesn't need it. Now, why do I take that position on preferring not to line tanks? Well, number one, it's a lot of work. The components, the, the, uh, it usually uh, comes in a can. Uh, sometimes they're two parts, sometimes they're single. It's relatively expensive. It's a lot of work to do it right and do it well. The preparation work, the cleaning, the drying, uh, getting it just in the right spot so that the liner will, in fact, uh, be permanent. I have seen liners fail. I have had friends that had, have had tank liners that have failed that they purchased and it was flaking off on the inside. I've encountered that in a few tanks myself. If I believe the tank is compromised to the level that it needs a liner, I would consider doing it, and I have. To be honest about it, there are times I've lined tanks, but I avoid it if I can. If the tank is compromised to that point, I would probably be inclined to repair it, that is, weld it up, braze it up, uh, or perhaps even replace it uh, before I would put a liner in it. If you're doing a liner just for uh, building your own confidence, okay. Uh, I don't think it's necessary for that. If I do a thorough inspection with a flashlight and I strip the rust out, I test it for leaks, take my time with it, and I, upon inspection like I did on this tank, I view it's in good condition. This tank's in very, very solid condition for being a 1966 model. If I can build my confidence to the level that uh, I can go ahead and can proceed with the with the restoration of the tank, then I don't line them. Uh, again, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with lining, using a liner on a tank. I prefer not to use them if I can avoid it. And uh, I prefer to leave the tank just clean and stripped inside like you can see that one. So that's my, my perspective on lining of tanks. You know, each person has to make their own calls, uh, call for their particular project and their comfort level. Next step then, what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out what gauge steel this is, get my welder set up and do some test tacks to see if I can get uh, the appropriate heat level to get some of these attached. And uh, I'll bring you back uh, a little bit later. Well, we're back, and it's probably 45 minutes later, and this was my first test run. By the way, I'm going to show you some of the actual process, but I did, the, I did my initial test run off camera because I wanted to be able to concentrate on the work and not have to be concerned with getting good camera shots and that kind of thing. So you'll have to forgive me for that. But you can see right here are the remnants of one of the previous nails that worked pretty well that was tacked right in place right about there you can just see the remnants that has been ground off what i had done is i had put or tacked four four or five uh nails nail heads here and then used a slide hammer to pull 
the dents out. And it, it actually worked really well. I'm quite surprised. This is nice and smooth on each side here. There was a nail about here, 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 here. I think I had four. There is still a little depression right where the point of the pen is right here. This dark section you can see a little bit of a depression yet. So I think what I'm going to do in my next run is put a nail here and here and probably another one here three and then try to lift that a little bit more. It probably would be okay where it's at right now but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can't lift that down a little bit more here and then I'm going to work my way this way. I think you got a little reflection there. Work my way this way because the rest of the dent is in this section here. Put four or five, maybe six nails in this section here and see if I can't get uh, that dent out. But I'm going to do a finish this one first. Again, I hit uh, tack them in place, lifted them or pulled them with a puller, and then came back and just cut them off and ground it smooth. So I'll go ahead and get these three tacked into place. What I found worked best, I tried using a locking plier to hold the nails. Ultimately what I found is just a pair of uh, needle nose like that and held them with my left hand in place and then tacked with the uh, welder with my right hand. Once I got one tack on it, then it was just a matter of letting go with the plier because it would stay in place and then moving around and tacking on the opposite side. In my initial settings that I uh, started with on the welder seemed to work really well so I started conservative because I didn't want to burn through and I didn't fortunately and that seemed to work really well so I think I'm just going to stick with that. So I'll do one, two, three nails and then we'll pull those out. As you can see, I've transferred the tank to the floor and I got a uh, rubber mat here that I normally stand at at my uh, workbench. The reason I did this is threefold. Number one, I can get a better perspective of the camera. I can't get a perspective with the over camera, over bench camera mount using the puller. Number two, it's far more convenient for me to straddle the tank like this and use the puller and it gives me more vertical, vertical pull on it. Uh, those are the primary reasons. So what I'm going to do now, these are welded all three of these, these uh, studs like we talked about. I'm going to work, work my way back and forth, pulling on each one of them one at a time and seeing if we can't pull out much of the rest of the dent. Now the idea isn't totally to remove the dent necessarily, it's to significantly remove it by pulling, uh, if you pull it up too high, then you're going to have to work the metal back down again and get it level. So if it's a little bit lower than uh, surrounding metal, that's okay because I'll come back with body filler at a later date. So let's go ahead and get started here using the puller. Got to adjust the clamps, the jaws a bit like that. What I found works best for me is to hold the puller in my right hand, I'm right handed, and just use my left hand to act, activate the weight. And you see the tank wants to move a little bit. And I move to the next one. to the next one. Now I'll just work my way back and forth. 
I'm, I'm learning as I go, I'm teaching myself because I've never done this before. I'm going to stop and see how we're doing here in comparison to the surrounding metal. If I was to bring the metal up too high, then I have to work, I'll have to work it back down later on. I'll do at least one more round. That one I popped right off. That's actually the first one I popped off. Occupational hazard, I suppose, of doing this work this way. Save me half and grind it off, cut it off and grind it. There's the uh, up close shot. It's pretty good actually. I think what I'll do now is just cut these these remaining two off and grind it back. It might be a little bit lower than I would prefer, but I think I'm going to call it good at this point. I thought I'd give you an up close look at uh, the welds. This one I'm being pulled is slightly bent. To the left, starting to pull away. And you can see there, I think, what the welds look like. It's more concerned of the burning through than anything else, as you can imagine. We're going to go ahead and cut these off. changed my mind and decided not to cut off these uh, back three pins uh, as I might wish to finesse that a little more but I did add these five towards uh, closer towards me just now so um, I'm going to go ahead and start working these all out at this point I'm not intending to add any more uh, pins I don't think I'm going to have to I'll just keep keep working these I'll start with the the ones I just added, which are right here, they're all hot right now. It worked my way back and forth until I'm satisfied, and then I think I'll just cut them all off and grind them back at one time. 
Theoretically, that would be it for this once I grind them down. And any remaining depressions or anything that's on level once it's ground back would be uh, handled through body filler.
Well, there's a finished product. I used uh, an abrasive wheel and ground this back, both of the areas. This one in particular, the one furthest to the right, came out really well. You can just see a few remnants of the studs that I ground off. Of course, these are the shallowest of the dents, too. This one, uh, I didn't get out quite as much as I probably would have preferred, though it still is a vast improvement from where it was at. You don't want to pull this metal to the positive that is above the surrounding metal because you just have to work it back down again. So the fact that it's just slightly negative, and I think you can see that there is fine. Next thing I'll have to do now with this tank is I'll have to document the width of the painted sections all the way around on both sides so that when I get it back from the chromer, which will be the next step, the chrome shop, because they'll strip all this off, all the paint will be removed, all the chrome will be removed, they'll take it back to bare metal and re-chrome the whole tank, then I'll have to lay these uh, stripes back out again and paint it later this, uh, probably this summer. That's also why I can't do anything further in terms of um, metal working at this point. I can't fill this with body filler because they're going to strip it back anyway to bare metal. And uh, body filler would just get removed. So uh, it'll go to the chromer just like it is. They'll strip it, I'll get it back, and then um, have, to, have to protect obviously the new chrome when I lay out the stripes and, and handle and paint it and do the, the filler, the skim coats here and here and recontour uh, this, uh, this part of the tank. But that's as far as I can go at this point. The uh, puller I made, which is really where this all began, worked out really well. Uh, one thing I discovered, you got to keep your hands out of the way of this slide hammer. I got myself a couple of times here, here and here. Occupational hazard, I suppose. So you do have to be a little careful with it. And, uh, but it worked, worked fine for, for my application. So the reality is I don't do that much body work. So I wouldn't expect to need this tool again for a while, but now I have it. It was kind of fun making it, showing it to you folks, and I'll just put it away for now. Well, that's it for this video. Put a wrap on this one, and as usual, Thanks for watching.